Welcome. My name is Dr. Gregory Pussell. I'm a dentist in St. Louis, Missouri. And if you want to get in touch with me for any reason, you can catch me at my website at GregoryPusselldds.com. And if you've got a smartphone, you can just scan in that little QR code below. It'll take you there. And if you want information on this or other presentations that I've done, go to my blog. That's at TheAbsolutetooth.com. And you can see it right there. And again, you can click on the little smart code or the QR code with your smartphone. The name of this presentation is Your Saliva Could Be Killing You or The Evolution of the Dental Worm. Now while that could be a slight exaggeration, your saliva could, could be killing you, I'm going to show you the connection between your saliva, the bacteria, and the diseases in your body. Harmful oral bacteria is really showing up more and more in all of our research as being linked to heart disease, atherosclerosis, osteoporosis, premature births, type 2 diabetes, strokes and even blood clots. So these things have been influenced by oral saliva in our mouth, the bad bacteria. Now there's good healthy bacteria that can be in our body or there can be bad harmful bacteria. What we want is a good healthy bacteria. Now the reason that it's not an exaggeration is the saliva will directly influence the type of bacteria you have in your mouth. And we're going to show that in just a minute. But that's why your saliva could be linked to your bad bacteria which are linked to these diseases. So the next step is we're going to talk about the evolution because as far back as 2500 BC people believed that it was a tooth worm that burrowed into your mouth that caused this kind of issues that you can see in this uh, 17th century uh, carving of a tooth. And as you can see on the left side you have the tooth worm that's burrowing in the tooth and on the right side of that tooth you can see the torments of hell that are caused by what we call a toothache. So we know it's no longer a, a tooth worm. In fact, it was in 1954 that they actually showed that there was a, uh, a model that bacteria actually cause tooth decay. And before that, they really couldn't prove it. They suspected it, but couldn't prove it. But when I went to dental school in the 80s, this had been so ingrained over the last 25, 30 years that they had a model and this model was if you have plaque and now plaque is bacteria, it's a colony of bacteria that all is linked together if you have plaque sitting on the teeth for any specified period of time you get decay. So that's why they say brush, floss, come in, we need to get that plaque off, we need to get the tartar off the teeth because that's all bad. But what we started to see didn't quite fit the model. In fact, in my 25 or almost 30 years of being a dentist, what we started to see was we went in and we would tell patients, brush, floss, brush, floss, because that was what was drummed into our heads and come in on a regular basis. Now, I do believe in brushing and flossing. Do it myself and recommend it to all my patients. But sometimes it's not enough because we would have patients that would come in and brush and floss on, you know, they're just like they were supposed to, and come in on the routine cleanings and they would still have dental decay. And we'd scratch our heads and say, they mustn't be brushing and flossing right or they mustn't be doing it enough. But then we started to see the other side of the coin. We had patients that would come in with all of this bacteria on their teeth and they would have no, back, no cavities, they would have no periodontal disease, they might have a little red and inflamed gums and we would say, boy, that doesn't make sense either. They're leaving this plaque sit on the teeth for this long period of time and they don't have any problems. What gives? So we thought, oh, well, we must have good genes, good DNA. That's why, it's, that's why it's not a problem for them. But that's not the whole problem. The problem was is the model we were taught in dental school was wrong because this model assumes that all plaque and all bacteria is bad bacteria. And now we know that's not true. Indeed, the things that influence whether you get dental decay is the hormones that you have in your mouth specifically whether you have the good bacteria or the bad bacteria. If you have the good bacteria, it's actually helpful. It protects the mouth. If you have the bad bacteria, it'll eat into it, dissolve the tooth with its acids, just what causes cavities. And what influences, the key component of what influences whether you have good bacteria or bad bacteria is your saliva. So we're going to talk about what the saliva influence is on the bacteria. Before we do that, we're going to first go take a step back. We're going to say that the strep mutans, which is what this picture is, is the bacteria that usually causes the acid and eats into the tooth and actually dissolves away the enamel in the tooth structure. 
So if it, if it clumps together and it's there long enough, it forms sheets, which again we call plaque. And if it's there again long enough, that plaque will lay, put a layer of biofilm over the top of it, which is like a protective wax coating so that uh, chemicals and antibiotics can't get to it to kill it. So that's why we would need to disrupt it manually with a floss or a brush. And, but you still have this, all of this proliferation of bad bacteria in your mouth, which just recolonizes again. What if we knew if you have the good bacteria or, this, or the mouth environment for the bad bacteria and be able to lead your mouth to the, have the appropriate environment so that you wouldn't have this harmful bacteria in your mouth in the first place to cause the problem? That's where we're headed. That's the evolution from the toothworm to just pushing the bacteria around with brush and floss to actually create an environment that's healthy where the bad bacteria can't live. So bacteria itself that cause these decays can happen in one of three areas. The chewing surface of the tooth, which you see on top of the tooth, and that will go in through one of the grooves, which is usually a weak point, and burrow its way down through that enamel. When it gets in the soft inside part of the tooth, it expands and eventually starts working its way toward that where the nerve and blood vessels are, as you can see on the inside of the tooth here. And that's when you get a toothache, and that's when you need a root canal. So we certainly would want to catch it before that. But more importantly, what if you couldn't, the back, bad bacteria couldn't live in your healthy mouth? So we need to know which side that's on. More importantly also is you could have a smooth tooth in between the teeth, as you can see. You can have a smooth uh, decay. And again, we tell that's where you're not flossing. You're just not flossing enough. Again, important to floss but let's eliminate the bad bacteria. And the last one is the root cavity, which we see a lot in patients that have dry mouths. Now, other patients get it too, but usually it's predominant if that saliva isn't bathing the teeth and protecting it. So this is what a cavity looks like in the mouth. This is the brown spot, on which you can see next to the silver filling, was a deep cavity, it actually was in between the teeth, rather extensive. We went in and filled it, the patient's fine, but if you have more than a couple of these, you can expect that you've got that bad bacteria prevalent throughout the mouth. This kind of patient we'd look at and say, boy, they're, you're just not brushing along their gum line. What is wrong with them? So we'd go in and as mechanics, we would fix them up, make them very pretty, but would we have really done anything to eliminate the susceptibility to getting the decay again? Not really. And that's where we're headed. We would also see the possibility when patients have plaque on the teeth, as I showed you in that previous slide like this one, that they, that could actually lead to periodontal disease, where it erodes away the structure and the foundation around the tooth until eventually you, you start to get uh, more of the tooth exposed. As you can see, the roots are exposed on this tooth, and that could lead to bone loss. In fact, periodontal disease is the number one reason that adults lose their teeth. So again, bad bacteria, good bacteria. So if the saliva is such a key component, what parts of the saliva, what can we look at in order for us to first determine whether you have the good, healthy saliva or the unhealthy saliva that's leading to a, the bad bacteria living there? Well, the five components of the, is the acidity, which has to do with pH. pH, chemist term, we aren't going to get real techy here, but you'll understand this. What will happen is, is that if the mouth is running too acidic, the bad bacteria can live there. In the, so the other, second thing, we're, we're going to get back to that in, in some detail in just a minute. The second thing that influences this is the buffering capacity. That's the ability of the saliva to counteract any acids that are put into the mouth to neutralize those acids. If you can't neutralize the acids, then the teeth are much more susceptible to being broken down by the acids that are given off by the bad bacteria because they actually give off the acids that eat into the teeth or if you're drinking a margarita from the lime juice. But if you don't have appropriate buffering capacity, that can lead to you, the, the acid breaking the teeth down faster. The second thing is the amount of saliva. As I mentioned before, people with dry mouths have a tendency toward root cavity. So we'll get to that too. The type of saliva and eventually the type of bacteria, which I mentioned before, is, is it healthy or is it harmful? So the first step is, is, it, is the acidity or the pH of the mouth and we'll take a little test strip or a meter and we put it into the saliva and if we're using this test strip like you can see in the picture that test strip will change colors and as we when we look on the chart what that'll tell us is what the acidity of the mouth is now seven on the chart the green at the bottom row is neutral that's water or water that isn't acidic or basic 
And if you're above that, the number's higher than that, that means your mouth is running basic. If you're below that, it's running acidic. Well, research is showing right now is that if your pH in your mouth is, or your acidity in your mouth is 6, 8 or above, the bad bacteria just can't thrive there. But what we're seeing in patients that have all of the bad bacteria, they're all in the yellows and the pinks, which tell us that their mouth is running very acidic, and the bad bacteria just love that and thrive there. So the key is, we need one of the keys is, we need to change the pH of the mouth. We need to, to raise the pH of the mouth, make it more neutral. And then the bad bacteria doesn't want to live there. The second thing is, is the buffering capacity. Now this seems to be kind of the current gold standard in looking at whether your mouth is susceptible to decay because it's the saliva's ability to neutralize those acids that gives us the, the protection to prevent the decay. So we'll take some more saliva and drip it on those three little dots that you can see over here in the brown and those also change colors. And as you can see on this particular chart, if you're on the far right of the chart where it says 12, that's the maximum buffering capacity. You can handle a lot of acid coming into your mouth. If it's 10 or 12, we consider that to be healthy. Again, my experience is showing that people are susceptible to decay have less than 10, and some of them are zero. So they have no ability to handle any acid that's introduced to their mouth. And if those acid-producing bacteria in there, it can just cause total havoc in the mouth and lead to all of those nasty diseases. The other thing we want to look at is the amount of saliva. If the mouth is running too dry, and there's tests for us to do that, like my mouth is running real dry now, but that's from talking, that's a whole different issue. But if, the, if you don't have enough saliva, we have methods to, uh, to help the mouth and protect it yet. So there is tests for us to do that. The second thing is, is the type of saliva. So we want to make sure that the saliva isn't too thin or too thick and it's just kind of in the middle, and that's a judgment call on an on a, on a educated dentist to be able to take a look at that also. The last thing and the last component of the saliva is we're going to look at the type of bacteria. So there's, if, wouldn't it be great if we just had a simple test to determine if there was the good bacteria in your mouth or whether there was bad bacteria in your mouth? Remember, there's always bacteria. It's just going to be on one side or the other. So actually there is, and it's very inexpensive. We, the, we use in our office the carry screen meter and we take a little q-tip and rub it on the teeth uh, and get some of the plaque off we put it back into the tube and put this little special little uh, chemical or reagent over it and shake it up drop it into the meter and turn the meter on and it will read the amount of what's called ATP which is an energy unit inside that's in the cells now the bad bacteria have to have a lot of ATP so the research is showing that if the number on this particular meter shows up to be 1,500 or less, you have good, healthy bacteria. If it shows 1,500 or more, then you have destructive bad bacteria. Does that mean you have cavities, you're going to get cavities? No, but it does mean that you are susceptible to cavities because you have an acidic environment, bad bacteria. There's things we can do for that before it even becomes an issue. As you can see in the meter, this patient almost is running 3,000, so we would consider him to have some bad bacteria. At this point, depending on the circumstances and what was going on, we may do further tests so that we can see specifically what kind of bacteria is in the mouth and actually uh, so we can treat it specifically and, and eradicate it once and for all. So this has been the evolution of what dentistry is moving to. Moving away from the tooth mechanic that's just going to fix the problem that's broke and moving into a situation where we created an environment to where the teeth aren't breaking down anymore, at least not from bacteria. And the evolution has been coming up through the ranks for the last 3,000 years. And now we're moving into a whole different realm where dentists are dealing more with the oral environment, the terrain, rather than just dealing with brush, floss, and that mantra. And the second thing is the saliva, obviously, from even what I showed you, is which is a you know, thumbnail of the hours and hours of study and research that's been made done on this, is that the saliva has a tremendous influence on the type of bacteria which influences what's happening in your own body. So I want to thank you for watching. If, my name is Gregory A. Pussell. If you want to have any comments or questions, I welcome that. Please put them down at the bottom or even go to my blog or check out my website. I gave you that information earlier. 
and like me on Facebook, but that will keep you updated on this presentation and the other ones that I'm going to be putting out there. So if you want to continue getting health updates and how this all interacts together, then please like me on Facebook. You can go to that URL or use your smartphone. That will take you right to the like button on my Facebook page. I thank you again for watching and have a wonderful day.